Um, I also wanted to take the time to kind of frame this topic for all of us. So we're, even though um, some of you might have attended previous webinars, you'll notice this webinar is part two of a first conversation that took place in 2019. Um, you know, to get us all on the same page, I just thought I'd start by saying that the NCCDH has been exploring the concept of values as they relate to health equity action now for a few years. In 2017, as I mentioned, um, we started uh, looking at how organizations can develop their capacity um, to in the area of health equity. We held a webinar on health equity values um, and really started to think about what that meant. Um, and some of you may have been part of that conversation, some of you have not. Um, and, and, and we're thrilled that you're here today either way. So, but in 2020, we published a Let's Talk document, and we have a series of these documents that are really key concept explainers. They surface the relevant evidence, they ask some key questions, and they, they do some um, thinking about what we as a center um, believe that this topic or concept means for public health practice. And so this Let's Talk focused on values and health equity. And it, of course, introduced the concept of a value, uh, explored the albeit limited <laughs> literature in this specific area, and broadly discussed the values that support um, health equity and also the societal value tensions that can present themselves in public health practice. And within this Let's Talk, we, we note that public health is made up of multidisciplinary actors. So all of you who are uh, with us today are likely from different disciplines, different training areas, um, um, and who, who all have an ethical responsibility, um, and in some disciplines, a very clearly named responsibility to take a health equity approach. And we adapted Bernay Brown's definition of a value for public health as an important way of being or believing. And by extension, and this part is important, doing. Um, and we also note that, and this comes from a theorist named Schwartz, that values share six common features. You can see them here, that values are linked to um, feelings. So the, they have to do with how we feel about something, what we hold most important. Um, they're motivated by action because they're connected to larger goals. They're more than any one action or situation. They can serve as standards. They are necessarily assigned different levels of importance because you can't value everything at one to one time. And again, necessarily, um, the relative importance of specific values can guide priorities and actions. And the interesting thing about values, and this Let's Talk also contains a brief discussion of this, is how they operate at different levels. So public health actors um, like yourselves, and I mentioned this before, come from different disciplines, but you also come from different sets of lived experience, uh, different social locations, and, and you've trained and thought and, and, and uh, work in different contexts. So I'm sure that um, most people can agree that we all navigate different personal, organizational, and societal contexts, and that values present themselves in each one of these contexts. And societal values often uh, influence, you know, what the values are of organizations or individuals, but they're not always completely congruent either. So it depends on the society and it depends on the organization and the individual. And I'm just going to pause here because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to check in with all of you and to, to have a chance to hear from you as well um, and ask very, very, very quickly, because we have this loaded for you in what we call a Slido. Um, and Danielle's put the link here in our chat box. You can just click on it um, and then enter that code that you see in a new browser. Um, and so we want to know, are specific values named by your public health organization? And I'm just going to see if I can see anything here in this Slido. So are specific values named by your public health organization? So, so far I'm seeing, and I don't know if all of you are seeing this too, um, what I can do. Um, Danielle, do you need me to stop sharing my screen for you to share your screen? Probably. I will stop sharing my screen. All right. So 
Um, Danielle's going to put the Slido up so that we can have a look at what people are saying in case you don't have it in front of you. So we're seeing 79% of people say yes. 13% of people so far say, I don't know, or maybe that's dropped down to 12. Oh, it's always changing. And then a few people saying no. Okay, well, that's good to know. We can check back in a little later. So overwhelmingly, people are saying yes, specific values are named by your public health organization. Um, the next question that we had, and I won't go back to the slideshow because I know that um, Danielle's gonna share this again, is which values tend to inform health equity decision-making programming and policy in your organization? And that's a bit of a trickier question. It, it requires you to think about, um, you know, within those values that are named or even the values that aren't named, which values tend to inform health equity, decision-making, programming, and policy in your organization? And we're going to do this as a word cloud. So um, you can enter as many words as you want, I believe, um, and we'll see them come up here on our screen. Thanks so much for doing that, Danielle. So I'm seeing respect, um, you know, fairly largely there. And accountability. I'm seeing words like social justice, accessibility, collaboration. Oh, accountability and collaboration are getting a few more hits and humility. So of course, the bigger a word is, it means the more people have responded with that word. I'm seeing words like affordable, collaboration, cultural humility, quality, and respect and accountability and collaboration and humility are uh, maintaining their kind of status as bigger words with respect in the middle. All right, thanks so much for that. So we'll give you a chance to check in on that again, maybe later. Um, and I will just relaunch my slides. So bear with me for a second here. All right. So thank you all for joining us in that exercise. As I mentioned, the literature that we found on this topic, um, when we started to look at, at writing a let's talk on this topic, was really limited. And there's certainly no definitive consensus on the organizational values that support health equity. But there is, um, there is work that exists in the area of foundational values for public health, different organizations and um, disciplinary groups and for example, core competencies written for different disciplines have named specific values, um, even if it's in a preamble or within the text. Um, and there's also values that are written about in the context of social justice, of community development, um, in work related to critical social theories, and um, in organizational development and in what works within organizations. And so we really drew from a, a fairly wide literature base, um, starting with, of course, trying to look for values that support health equity in public health practice. And we also uh, consulted with the field in different ways. We had an initiative going on, um, as I mentioned before, that was focused on organizational capacity building for health equity. And that came with a learning circle of practice experts and um, various different practitioners. And um, so we consulted with them um, and we came up with this list that's by no means a comprehensive list, but it is a starter list. And um, you'll see that a lot of the words that we saw in that word cloud actually also appear here. So that's good, it's, it's validated in some way. Um, there's, there's some alignment. And those values were divided um, in the way that we thought about them um, as two different types of values, either values that have to do with the way of behaving, um, which are instrumental values, or values that have to do with a sort of aspirational way of existing, thinking about how, um, how what kind of state do we want to achieve or exist within. And so values like um, solidarity and accountability and um, trust and humility and respect, which we saw very strongly uh, in that word cloud with the, I, didn't, I don't know if I saw solidarity, but I saw accountability, humility, and respect in that word cloud um, were, were thought of as behaviors, ways of acting. Um, and 
values such as social justice and self-determination and even love, which as you'll remember if you've recently read the uh, Ottawa Charter, the good old Ottawa Charter is actually present in um, the Ottawa Charter. So it, those values were thought of aspirational states of existence. And when looking at the literature, we also um, really found that there's, there's two main tensions that present in society. And so all of those values that we just saw on that list can come up within these main tensions in society. And these may or may not resonate for you. It'd be great to hear what you think in the chat box. Um, and even if you have experienced some values tensions, feel free to uh, write them down in our chat box too. But so what we heard is that there, what we saw in the literature is that there are these two main tensions. One is readiness for change um, versus keeping things the way they are. So kind of pull between um, being ready for something to, to be different, to do something differently and keeping things the way they are. And the other tension was really the looking at the well-being of others and wanting that, well-being of others being everybody or a specific group versus that kind of something that is more favorable for the in individual, having success and power for one individual or for oneself. And um, we thought about these societal value tensions and we thought about how they sometimes present in public health practice. And there's so many different examples. Um, as I said, these will likely come up later during our panel conversation. And um, also if, if, if you are able to in the chat box, one I'll highlight is um, between that readiness for change and wanting to keep things the way they are. That presents a lot in public health practice that we hear about from um, people through our various webinars and uh, other ways that we communicate with the field. And that's about community engagement. Um, and whether or not it's even um, something that it, it presents in a conscious way, but that value tension sort of manifests as the way that we do things right now is this, that would be keeping things the way they are. And that might include engaging in what we think are good consultations, but are often maybe limited consultations uh, with communities and with those who experience inequity. And then a readiness for change or um, a willingness to try something different, to um, approach the, 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 the engagement differently and to view those who experience disadvantage and inequity as active partners and decision makers. Um, and really sharing the power there. So that value tension is definitely one that we hear about quite often. I'm sure there are many others. I just wanted to highlight that. So all this to say that we kind of sat with this and grappled with it and thought, what does this mean? Um, you know, when, you, when, when these value tensions come up, when you're trying to name and operationalize health equity values um, within public health organizations, what can public health organizations and actors actually do about it? Um, and how can we ensure that, that, that there, those kinds of uh, values are linked to concrete uh, practices and ways of being accountable and ways of measuring um, that health equity is, is, is clear and present, ways of inter integrating it into decision-making. So to try and answer exactly these kinds of questions, um, some co-authors and I, Sumayan Dubeyeo and uh, Bernice Yanfel and I wrote this resource, which integrates a review of, as I mentioned, the limited literature in this area with evidence and knowledge from other disciplines and from our engagement with the field. And we further defined those values that, um, that I mentioned before. So this tool includes um, some, some pretty comprehensive definitions of those values that you saw. And it also thinks about how to engage in a planning process um, with senior organizational leaders and with health equity focused staff and um, get to a place where you can really envision how those values are going to be put into practice in the in immediate, uh, short, medium and long term. And in both of the resources that I've mentioned so far that let's talk in this one, we made the argument that because values guide our attitudes, belief and ethical decision making, they are in fact, they can be thought of as structural drivers for health equity. And that's why they deserve our attention, particularly within public health organizations. Um, and in, it, there's another piece that I just wanna mention before we move on to our panel conversation here, because it might be of interest to you. Um, there was a 2020 study by Van Rood, Polly and colleagues, which really validates the need for that kind of planning, the kind of planning that connects naming values to actually looking at how they can be operationalized within a, a 
a public health and larger health system. And so this study um, looked at, 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 it was BC focused and it was a qualitative study. Um, and I can let you read it on your own time, but really they found, and what, what was validating for us was hearing that, um, that in order for health equity to be prioritized and in order for those values to translate into practice, that resources need to be dedicated to um, health equity efforts and related staff capacity building and a comprehensive approach to prioritizing health equity within the larger public health system has to be made visible. And that includes having accountable leadership and enforceable standards and legislation. Um, and so that kind of, it, it was nice to see that at the same time as we were working on um, all of these things, um, especially given the limited literature in this area. So with that, we are going to jump into one more uh, interactive activity before we hear from our larger panel of speakers. And we do have a great panel of speakers for you today to engage in this conversation. Um, and we thought we'd go into small group discussions, sort of set up by this little quick overview. And we'd think about, now that we've had a thought chance to, to hear some of what you name as values that support health equity, and see some of the values that um, we came up with in our related readings for this webinar um, as values that support health equity. To, to reflect on what values were front and center during your organization's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, and you can also continue to word that as continue to be uh, important. And were these values supportive of health equity? And it'd be great to hear your reflections on that when we come back to the large group. We're just going to do this for a few minutes. Um, we'll start with six minutes, see if we need to go to eight, and then we'll come back to large group. So Danielle is going to put you all into groups of two or three. Um, and, and hopefully you can introduce yourselves and ask those questions of each other. And then we're, we've provided the Slido link again. It's the same Slido link. You don't have to change it, um, I believe. And um, what, we, what we're doing here is we're gonna ask you to, again, put those values into a word cloud so we can see um, which values are most prominent during your organization's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And then you can discuss among each other if those values were supportive of health equity. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing and um, Danielle can send you into your breakout groups. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you, Danielle, for doing such a great job switching between these screens and uh, running our Slido for us. Um, what we're seeing here is, is really great to see. Uh, so I don't, um, I don't I know if it's easy for Danielle to switch between these two, so I'll just say it, that when we, what we saw in our kind of first word cloud when we asked um, which values were, were um, were present in, uh, oh, there you go, health equity decision-making and programming and policy, we saw values like integrity and collaboration and respect being the biggest and humility and accountability coming to the center. Um, and when we uh, switch over to thinking about the responses during the COVID-19 pandemic, we still get a, a many different words that are supportive of health equity. Um, the big one in the middle is not no longer respected is compassion. Um, equity is, is, is big there too, so is transparency, trust, solidarity, authenticity, flexibility, collaboration, um, humility, innovation, and patient-centered. Um, and what I, um, I was having a great conversation with somebody from Peel, and of course um, we have some panelists who are going to be joining us from Peel, Peel region as well, and Niagara region very soon. Um, and we'll introduce all of our great speakers soon. Um, and so it was interesting to have a conversation with somebody at Peel, um, at Tina, thank you, um, and hear about some of these values coming to life. So thank you all for engaging in those co brave conversations and stepping into that reflective um, space and sharing your thoughts with us. So we'll save these um, word clouds and share them back with you um, following the webinar. And um, we're now going to move back into our, uh, I don't know if it's a regularly scheduled program, but I will get back to my slides here. 